Today, the data science incubator is a continuation of uh, what we started last week. So the focus is discussing code reviews. And last week we talked about uh, mostly conceptual aspects of code reviews and uh, I didn't have time to cover the tools. And the tools that I'm going to be showing today are uh, focusing on R. Uh, and uh, as a little review, uh, you know, remember what we discussed last week is that uh, productive conversations about code uh, have these three properties. Uh, first, you know, they, they include code that actually runs. Uh, so it is the responsibility of the person submitting the code to you know, get it to a standard where at least the code runs. Even if, if running the code means producing an error, because that's probably the, the thing that you want to discuss. So you have to be able to reproduce that error. A second property is that uh, it is code that the, the reviewer doesn't have to run because uh, the, the code review includes output, ideally. Uh, which means that sometimes uh, if, if, the, the other, if the reviewer is more or less engaged in the, um, in, in the, in the kind of code, is already familiar with it, sometimes it's even possible to tell what's going wrong even just by looking at, at the output without running the code. But then the third property is that sometimes you do need to dig a little deeper in the code and then you want to actually run it. And it shouldn't be too difficult. And you shouldn't, as a reviewer as well, have to say, you know, install a lot of software that you don't want to install. So, you know, I wanted to think of alternatives to, to provide such an environment that, you know, you can reproduce what someone is um, asking you to review, but at the same time, you don't, you know, contaminate or change your environment in a dramatic way. So there are, there are a few strategies and tools for that. And that's the focus of today. So the, the, this little table here um, is um, sort of simplified from, from last time. Um, basically, I, I wanted to kind of focus on these two kinds of, of code reviews. One that is based on just like a little snippet of code, just a, a little chunk of code. And, and, uh, and for that, in R, we have the package reprex, and we talked about that many times, but there is one... Uh, feature of Reprex, which is the argument out file NA, which we haven't, I don't think we have covered it in depth here. And it is the source of um, you know, problems and solutions. So before I continue, like, can I ask uh, everyone in the room if you're familiar with, with this argument, if you saw it before and you have any idea of what it does? No? Okay, that's, that's good. That means that, uh, that this is going to be uh, useful. So let's talk then about reprex. Let's focus on that argument uh, out file in A and why you need it. Uh, and, uh, and then you know, I'm going to show how you can share the output of reprex. Do we have any, any question or comment before we, we jump to the demo? No? OK, cool. I was hearing like, uh, some, some background noise. So I thought that there was something there. OK, so let's jump to this uh, little repo. So this is going to be um, the code itself, of course, is, is just a toy example. It's not the, the focus to discuss what this code does. It's just to you know, have something that runs and then show you, um, you know, what, you know what, 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 how we could be sharing the, 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 some code and how that uh, Reprex package helps and how the argument helps. So say that I have this snippet of, of code. I'm only, you know, using a collection of packages in the tidyverse, getting some data that already exists in R because it's attached when you start the, your R session. It comes by default with the package data set. And then I'm you know, filtering. Let me open the room for someone else. Hello, hello. And then after using the packages in the tidyverse, I'm just um, well, you know, using this data set that comes by, by default in R and also you know, filtering a few, a few rows. So that's very simple. And if I run that in my computer, it just works. So I run that, you can see the output here in the console. It's no problem, right? So I now want to share that with someone. And it shouldn't be a big drama. You just, you know, can use reprex uh, as you normally do. You know, you could probably highlight it there and type here reprex on your add-ins. If you have the package installed, you should see something like you know reprex selection or render reprex, which allows you to decide where the reprex comes from. For example, from the current selection in this case, and you could choose what's the venue if you're gonna you know 
share that on GitHub, it will do some tweaks so that it's perfect for, for that. So I can just click render. And uh, I, what I get is here you know, the output that I could I could share. Now, even in the in the um, as you can see in the um, clipboard, if I do Control V, uh, I should be able to paste. Well, actually, I didn't. I don't know why. Maybe I'm lacking something in my clipboard. But basically, this is uh, you know like shareable, right? Easily shareable. So the the issue comes when the data is in your working directory, right? So say that, you know, you have a folder called data and you have a data set, which is the case in more realistic analysis that uh, the data doesn't just come with, you know, from, from with R, you know, it comes from somewhere in your computer. So how do you go about at least running the code? Sometimes the data is private and you can't share the data on GitHub in a public repo, but you can share the code that does something with the data and then, um, send the data you know, privately, or you can have the discussion in a private repository all the time. So in those cases, let's see uh, you know, how we, we could extend this. In those cases, you, you, know, you could use the interface to reprex to actually call in the function yourself. So this, uh, you know, this snippet that I, I wrote here, you could also rewrite it as, uh, you know, by just by wrapping it in reprex, right? So if you have that code, just do reprex. I'm going to use the namespace function syntax so if i do this and i'm sticking in here uh, this if i run that this should run and the reason why it's not running is because it's a, it's not just one line of code it's a bunch of lines of code and in that case the way you fix that is, is just use the curly braces and then you stick your code in between the curly braces so what you are passing as, as a single argument now to reprex is uh, not just one line of code but a bunch of lines of code so now you run that and uh, you should get your reprex here and your viewer again, right? So same thing. So uh, that means that, uh, you know, you could use that interface, but say that in, instead of, you know, using a data set that comes with R, I, I want to read a data set that comes from my data folder, as I showed you before. One way to create a safe path to that folder would be, uh, if you remember previous meetups, using the here, here package, which what it produces is, uh, it, it kind of knows the notion of what's a, a working directory and creates a path um, that, that will always work uh, for anyone in any computer. So you don't have to kind of hardwire any information about what's your system. So this, this, kit, this information here. So that's all good. And I try to improve my reprex a little bit by saying session information equals true because I want to share what's my, my computer environment. Uh, and then I run that and I will expect this to fail. And the reason is because when I run reprex, the default, as you can see here, it says error. The reprex basically doesn't find the data set empty cars CSV. And why? Because as you can see, you know, the, the path that I printed before, this one, that, which is the path in my computer, is very different to the path that reprex, reprex is looking for. And the reason is because, you know, by default, reprex will create a new little environment and a new working directory. So how do you tell Reprex to not look in this new temporary directory, but instead to look into your current directory where you're actually working? Well, and the way you do that is with that weird argument that I mentioned before, is that with that uh, argument out file NA. So just gonna review what I've just done. This is the snippet of code that kind of we started with, except that we, I'm now reading from a local file in my computer. And the way I, I'm calling this is with the actual function reprex. And I'm using two arguments that are useful. One, session information, because it, what it gives me is this little drop-down thing here that tells the reviewer everything about my environment. If I'm using, using Linux, Windows, Macs, what kind of packages, what versions, and so on and so forth, right? But then the, the focus of, of mostly like this part of the conversation is this argument here, out file equals NA. Unfortunately, the interface is very uninformative, <laughs> but what it does is that it tells uh, Reprex to not look into a temporary directory, but to look into your current working directory. The reason why it's not the default is because, you know, that is a little, it's, it's kind of not totally reproducible because, you know, you share the code, but then the other person doesn't have the data, right? So that's not ideal. Uh, so this approach works in that you can share the output of that code, but you have it's kind of your responsibility to share then 
the data set independently, right? So let's run this code to see what it produces. So I have just run this, and there you go. I, I expect now this to actually run, right? And includes the session information there. So let's see if I have this in my clipboard. Okay, so as you can see, I, I did see, uh, control V and it pasted what you can see here on the clipboard, right? So all I wanted to kind of prove to myself is that I have this on my clipboard and I can now move it to GitHub. So how would I go about that? And that's the, uh, the second uh, most important thing I wanted to mention. The, the first one being the out file um, argument. So let's go to GitHub. So here I'm working with one. Uh, so basically what I want to do now is to share this reprex. And of course I could share it in many ways. I could share it on, on Slack. I could share it on, on a GitHub issue. Uh, I could share it on a gist. Uh, if you're not familiar with gists, you know, when you go to, to GitHub, when you go to the plus button, there's always a new gist thing there. And gist is just a tiny repository that is composed of just one file. So my, I could say something like my reprex, and I could say MD was going to be the format of the file for R markdown, for markdown, sorry. Uh, and I, I'm just pasting the code that I got from reprex, right? So when I create the gist, and you actually you have here an interface to make it private if you want. This is, you know, the output. Here is the collapsible session information. And now what you're sharing with the reviewer is probably just a URL. But let's do this even in a, in a more, even cooler way. So let's go to the demo package here, DS incubator demo here. So the, in the same way that Word provides the, you know, comments and track changes uh, platform interface to have a conversation about text, GitHub provides an interface to have a discussion about, about code, to have a code review, right? So let's leverage that feature to our benefit. So um, you don't have to be like a GitHub genius to create a pull request. So I'm gonna show you that you, you have this thing here that says add file. And even if I was working from, so in this case, I'm working from an account that I have a lot of privileges over this repo, but let's go to another account. I'm, I'm changing here my, my user to, to this user here that has very little privileges over that repo. So I'm gonna navigate to that repo now. So what I want to show you is I, I'm kind of a visitor to this repo. I have zero privileges, but I still have this button here that says add file. So I can click there and say um, create a new file or I can upload the file from my computer. So in this case, I have a text in my clipboard. So I can click here on create new file. And uh, as you can see, I have just, you know, this is, you know, like creating a new file in, in any system. It's going to be created inside a of course, the repository demo, and I can, I could even create a new folder by saying new folder, for example, or whatever name you want, uh, and then slash, and that will kind of create that folder. And here, my reprex dot md, uh, and now I, I paste the code that I got from the reprex, right? So I'm creating a new file directly from the interface that it have provides, and what is the benefit of that? Okay, notice how the green button says propose new file. That suggests that this is going to create a pull request. So I'm creating a pull request without need, needing to know too much about, you know, without needing to bother about creating, you know, a remote connection between you know, the, re the remote repository and my local repository, nothing of that. I'm just creating a, a reprex locally, going to a repo where I can have this conversation because it's relevant to the code that I'm sharing. I'm creating a new file and that will give me uh, directly by default, you know, a pull request. So I just click the green button. Uh, I don't even need to, to say much here. I just create a pull request. So as you can see, the pull request is already done, it exists here. So let's see what the, you know, like your reviewer could experience. So your reviewer could have, you know, access probably to the, uh, to the same repository. Uh, if I refresh this, I expect to see a pull request and here it is. Uh, and, and here is the pull request, I click on it. And this is what I wanted to show you. You know, your reviewer can go to this tab here once they are in the pull request. You know, the conversation happens in this tab called, you know, conversation. So here, you know, we can, you know, add comments as much as, as, as we want. Yeah, say so thanks. But uh, the, the review, so the track changes feature of the, of the pull request happens here. It defines changed 
tab, right? So there your reviewer can look at your code and say, you know, click the plus button and leave a comment specific to uh, that um, to that line of code. So that's very specific. You can say something like, great, um, I could probably use only plier here, for example. And they can click here on start a review and that will be, yeah, your comment will be kind of pending until your reviewer completes the review. So let's say that they go down and they, they see something else that they want to uh, mention. Um, let's see, great right here. Uh, path, I got there. Um, okay, let's see that this is all the comments that your reviewer want to make. Uh, they add this uh, comment to their ongoing review and then they just click finish the review. They can say, here is my review. And they can say approve or maybe suggest changes. When they submit the review, notice how in the conversation uh, tab again, so we are now in the conversations tab, you now have an interface to continue the conversation and to resolve it. So once uh, you, know, you answer, you, know, you, you can see how you know, the, the review from your reviewer appears in the conversation, highlights the snippet of code that they chose to maintain the conversation about, to have this productive conversation about code. And, and there you could you know, answer. You could say something like, uh, good idea, but I'll leave it as is for now. And you can just say uh, comment, or you can also resolve the conversation. So that, that comment kind of goes away from uh, your eyeballs. And here, same thing. This is just a comment, thanks. So you can now resolve the conversation. So now your pull request has nothing pendant to be resolved. It's all resolved. If you want to go back to previous conversations, you just click here on you know, show or hide what's resolved to, to kind of review what the review was about. And that's it. So when the, the pull request is ready to be merged, they just click here on the merge button, they confirm, and, and that's done. So with that, I show you how you can produce. Let's go back to the to the uh, to this table. I show you how you can produce very quickly uh, a, a, um, some code that meets the, the expectations for a productive conversation about code because it actually runs, it shows, you know, it doesn't, uh, the, the reviewer has, doesn't have to run it, but it's easy to run if they want to because the reprex uh, is something that you can copy and paste and it should just work. We use the reprex package, in particular the argument uh, um, out file equals NA. And we shared, you know, I show you how to share it uh, in many ways, including GIST, but, you know, I strongly recommend uh, focusing on pull requests because you know you have that interface to have the conversation and to resolve the conversation and that leaves also a record so in a year to two years from now you can go back to the conversation and know why you know the decisions were made so basically this is the first part of the demo and also the most important one the second uh, and last part uh, hopefully it's going to take less than five minutes to leave some time for for discussion is that you know how you could move that um you know, what, what you know what you would you do if you have more files right so it's not just a snippet of code if you have a full file or multiple files well still you know the pull request is your friend um, but in this case when the conversation gets kind of long your file gets long what I would suggest is uh, okay Alex is, is leaving uh, Alex before you leave would you like to make any comment? No, okay, cool. Sorry, Alex, that uh, we missed you. Um, so how you would move that to another, um, to, you know, if you have a longer code to show, uh, then you would work probably with a GitHub document. I strongly recommend the GitHub document because that format shows up really nicely, nicely on, on GitHub. So if, uh, for example, if I view this file on GitHub, what you get is automatically, uh, let's go here, to increase investing. What you get is automatically a, a web page for that file, right? So any, any file that has this format and, uh, and lives on GitHub 
will we'll have this MD file with markdown file that GitHub knows about and renders as an HTML. So basically what you could be doing is uh, with no effort, creating not just code, but also creating a web page for your code, which means that you can now share in the same way that I show you how you could share like the link for a gist. You can share the link for um, a, a markdown, a, GitHub document with your reviewer, and here they see your code and they see the output of your code, right? So this, this, this is code that runs, code that I don't have to run because the output is there and I see what it produces, right? And it's easy to run because I can copy this and paste it in my in my console, right? So this is you know how the the repress could kind of extend into a, a document. You just uh, create a GitHub document locally, right? Um, if you don't know how to do it, you can go to the to file, new file, file, new file. Uh, you can go to our markdown, and then from templates, we'll give you the GitHub document format. When you click OK, you, you start with a fresh one, and then you can just remove the, the, the template and st start adding your own code. Right? And then you know you share in the same way. You can copy the output MD and do what I, and do what I did before. Uh, create a new file on GitHub, or if you're more fluent uh, with uh, GitHub connections and stuff, you can create uh, a pull request locally. You create a branch and then you push it to GitHub and then submit it as a pull request. So um, I think I'm going to stop here. Um, maybe one thing I would like to show you is this feature here that I included intentionally is uh, parameterized R Markdown documents. Have, have anyone here heard of parameterized R Markdown documents? Yes, 1%. Okay, cool. So what this does is it allows you to access in the code parameters that are defined in the YAML header of uh, the document as if they were uh, an element of a list. So the, the way you use that feature is that uh, you when, when you need a, a document, um, you can choose not just the plain vanilla knit, but you can choose the knit with parameters, and that will give you a little interface to, to you know, uh, to fill whatever you chose here. So here it says data because I, I you know, defined the parameter data, and I gave, um, I decided that instead of, of showing a path, it would show the output of uh, here here when I write in R, and this is how you run code R coding here. But I could also have said like more kind of plainly, I could say some, something like this. And if I now save this and run it, what I get is just that, right? So that, I think it does add value to conversations about code because what you are doing with this is you're giving your reviewer the ability to change things inside your code without writing code. You're just giving them an interface, which is actually powered by Shiny, by the way. So if you're familiar with interactivity in R, this is powered by, by Shiny, but you don't need to know anything about Shiny. You just define the parameters that change in your code and allow your reviewer to, to play, right? So they can uh, knit this file with the file that you gave, give them by default, or you can choose another file and see if the report produces uh, the same output or not. So let's stop here and see if we have any uh, to, to discuss. Do we have any questions, comments, uh, experiences reviewing code or sharing um, your own code that you would like to share? Maybe think of you know what has has been a challenge in the you know recent code reviews that you have had. Nothing to share. Maybe Antoine, from your from your experience, uh, like for example, reviewing um, code in your in your uh, data science studies. Uh, you know, I am assuming that you had to submit some code, and someone had to kind of read it and, and you know comment on that and assess it. You know, what what was your experience? Anything that you can add from there? I think you're muted, Antoine.
So what you're saying is, is, is uh, session information, is that what you're saying? Like to try share information about what environment you're using? Great. Okay, if that's the case, you may find. Oh, cool, cool. I'm very happy to follow up because you know, in uh, at two degrees, we use GitHub heavily. Uh, so, if you are interested in in kind of catching up with you know how we collaborate via GitHub, I'm very happy to to have like a one on one session for an hour or so and uh, and kind of give you an onboarding. I'm sure with your experience, you, you'll pick it up uh, quickly. Um, uh, Margaret Sata, I, do you have any experience, uh, you know, sharing code yourself or reviewing code from others? You used GitHub for that. Uh, is uh, and, and how, what was your experience? Uh, what, what were the biggest challenges in, in code reviews or things that you know, like probably the professors complain most about, uh, or the students complain most about? Totally agree. The, the mental model you need to have for uh, understanding Git uh, is totally novel. I mean, there is nothing in in day in like everyday life <laughs> that um, that you know prepares you to understanding Git. So it's something that you really need to to learn from from kind of scratch. So again, I, I say the same thing. It is a difficult thing, but it's you know once you unleash the power of Git, what you can do is like it's, it's truly amazing. Um, so I'm very happy to uh, to be used to to yeah, induct you to that. It, it will make you much more productive at work, but, um, but, but also it will give you something that you can port to, the, to your next you know, th stage in life. Uh, because you know, as, as, at least as far as I can see, a Git is very broadly, I mean, it's a very low level tool that is used in any other language, in, in many data science projects. So I'm, I'm very confident that at least for the next, say, I don't know, five, 10 years, Git is still continue to be a very powerful skill to have. So use this also as an opportunity to learn something that you can, you can take elsewhere with you. Okay. I'm also considering uh, doing, I mean, so far I've been um, suggesting tools to interact with Git uh, that are kind of user-friendly, um, you know, tools that build a layer that abstract the ugly details of Git. But I'm now at this, I kind of cover them almost all, um, except Git clients. Um, so I'm now at the stage where I'm considering actually doing the opposite and going deep into like ugly Git, hardcore Git, and, and, and show that. So I'm still kind of making up my mind if that should be something in the DS incubator or it should go in some, some other discussion. But thanks a lot. I've run out of time <laughs> for this meeting. Cool. Uh, thanks a lot for being here and I'll follow up with you all um, on Slack to make that happen. Okay. Bye.